Google Hangouts, um, Flipgrid, there's all sorts of technology stuff I've managed to learn in the last few weeks out of necessity. Sometimes stuff I thought I might get around to eventually, but no time like the present, you know, to figure it out. Um, I'm glad y'all could join us today. Um, when Christian says a, a presentation, I didn't uh, prepare a formal thing, though I do have um, like an advising thing that I thought I might, um, if I can figure out how to share my screen, oh, I see the thing, um, that I might share that and just so you have something to look at. And I'd be glad to email that to you if, so that you have it, um, just so you can see. Um, but I guess the general thing that I like to tell people is um, that the German major is meant to be super flexible. Most of our majors, I mean, in the 16 years I've been in Augustana, I think we've had exactly two um, students who were only German majors, who were not like double majors with um, German and something else. So most of our German majors, and I think this is true for most of our um, language majors in general in Augustana, most of them are double majors. And you can double major with a language and anything else that you can think of. I think that we have had people who have who have done any possible combination of majors you can think of, including multiple languages. So we've had people who did German and French with a minor in Spanish, which is kind of fantastic. Um, though that's sort of unusual. Usually there are more things like, we've had people who've double majored in, in English and history and music and business and biology and chemistry and comm studies, really literally everything you can think of. Um, and because of that double major nature of most of our majors, um, the German major is designed to be super flexible. Um, so like some majors, like if you take chemistry, you have to take certain courses in a certain sequence. Um, and like, so chemistry one is only offered in the fall and chem two is only offered in the spring. Like that's not how the German courses work because we're aware that most students are combining the study of German with something else. We wanted it to be super flexible. So all of the language courses and all of the cultural courses on, on topics of in literature or film or whatever are sort of freestanding things that can be taken and sort of squeezed into your schedule wherever you can fit them. And here's where, let's see if I can share my screen. Um, so here's the pretty little advising sheet. Um, this says 2019, but it's 2019 and beyond. Um, so the major in German is 28 credits, which is kind of normal. Uh, there are some majors that are bigger than that, that require more credits than that. Um, um, and the major and the minor have sort of similar structures. So there's some language courses and some of the culture courses which might be taught in English, and all of them can be taken in any order for the major or for the minor. Um, so majors 28 credits and minors only 20. Again, these are on the smallish to normal size. There are some majors and minors that are both bigger than that. The language courses are all um, taught in German, which isn't to say I never, a word of English never crosses my lips, but we shoot for speaking German like at least 90% of the time in class. Um, and the courses are organized around different cultural topics, mostly 20th, 21st century, so more contemporary kind of topics though not exclusively, I guess. They're organized, again, around these topics and not around um, language structures. So like we're not just sort of marching through a grammar book. That's not my goal. We do work on grammar points as they support what we're doing in these cultural topics. So like if, we're, if we are talking about something historic and we need to make sure that we know how to use the past tense, then we review the past tense. Um, if um, so, we, so we do do some grammar, but that's not my starting point. That's Grammar is definitely a, takes a supporting role. The cultural content's at the center for all of these. So you see the list of courses there. Um, German language and culture, which is the most generic name because I figured that way I get to do whatever I want in that class, um, that I've got a lot of flexibility. There I, I have changed that um, uh, every time I teach it. I, do, I like to do something that's different in it because it because I try to focus on contemporary issues. So a few years ago we talked about Germany's response to the refugee crisis of all the refugees coming from Syria. So we did a unit on that. We did a unit on um, East and West Germany today, differences between East and West Germany um, that you still, evidence that you still see today. Um, right now I'm, I'm thinking, I'm offering that 201 in the fall and I'm thinking about doing something related to, um, in, to the environment, to sustainability, which is always a huge topic in Germany because they're, they're pretty progressive in, in environmental issues. 
But now I'm also thinking we might need to talk about what is uh, about public health in, in Germany, because there's a lot of really interesting cultural stuff going on there. There's big differences in how Germany is handling this COVID-19 situation um, versus the US versus other countries. So the, the list goes on then, then we see um, Austria and Switzerland. We, those, they're often the sort of the forgotten stepchildren in German studies. So we don't talk as much about Austria and Switzerland as we do about Germany. Um, so there we do a little bit of history. We do some art, we do some music. Um, we do, uh, we will read some, some fiction, some like we're gonna read either Heidi or Wilhelm Tell and that. I mean, there's like just a fun mix of a lot of different cultural topics. Um, and again, I've, that used to be two separate classes, but I decided to combine Austria and Switzerland into one. But this similar format, they had the similar kind of format that we have to understand a little bit about the history, like why does, how does Austria see itself as different? How does Switzerland see itself as distinct from, from Germany? And um, we talk a little bit about how the German they speak there is different. And we do some historical topics and some contemporary ones. Love and Marriage is a, a class I just taught this fall. We did some um, also like a, a fun array of some feature film, uh, some poetry and some short fiction, and a lot of nonfiction, including a bunch of stuff that was geared towards um, young people, towards like German teenagers. So there were a lot of, um, we talked about like, you know, what describe a good date, what makes a good date, what kind of, what would be a good partner for you? Um, do you want to get married someday? Do you want to have kids? Like very personal topics. Though hopefully not too prying. Though you know, sometimes in language classes can pry into your personal business. Um, but very personal stuff, and hopefully it was all stuff that people related to pretty well. War on its aftermath is um, I focus on World War II and Nazi Germany, and and specifically looking. At, um, we talk about some of the horrible things that happened in that time period, and I like to focus more on the lessons that can be learned from that today. Like how do contemporary Germans? deal with that that sense of responsibility through education of young people through um, uh, memorial sites through um, works of fiction i'm thinking that i'm teaching that next year i'm thinking about using the graphic novel mouse i don't know if people know that one it's really great i've never used it in class before and it was originally written in english but i'm going to use the german translation because i think it i think it'll be really great as a way of looking at how different generations think about what they went through and how to how to process that. Um, German in the workplace is so business German. It's not heavy duty business and it's not only for business majors, but we do talk about like cultural norms that are different um, across between Germany and the US. Um, we talk about how you would apply for a job. We do practical things like writing a resume in German, writing a cover letter. We practice doing interviews. We practice workplace conversations. Um, that was super practical. It's not high level business because like it's not really meant to be a business class it's meant to be very practical language um, crime and justice i'm teaching right now um, this uh, the first half of the class we um, read mostly nonfiction stuff related to crime statistics about um, perceptions of crime and who's responsible for it and politically motivated crime um, and justice in a larger sense and law and order um, and in the second half of the class, which um, we're reading a, a novel, a, a play by the Swiss playwright Dürrenmatt called uh, Besuch der Alten Dame, The Visit, it's called in English, which deals with lots of major issues in, of, of justice in a, in a fictitious setting, but with a lot of really great messages that we're going to dig in there. Those last two sets of um, course numbers that you see there where they say taken in Germany, those are courses that we don't offer on campus but they are course numbers that allow us to easily transfer credit in for students who have studied away. So either taking part in a summer program or for a semester or for a whole year. And I can say a little bit more about study away in a little bit, but those all courses, coursework in German language taken in Germany or Austria or Switzerland would absolutely count towards the German program. So that's um, the, the more than 50% of the, the coursework in the German major or minor is among those language courses. The other part is, Culture, literature, film courses. I always sort of hesitate because culture, I mean, culture is a really strong component in the language courses too. Like those are not strictly language courses. They're like culture courses that are taught in, in, in the target language in German. But these courses then in this group are, are taught mainly in English. There's a couple in there that could be taken in, in Germany and would then be taught in German. And these fill um, 
these kind of double dip, as we talk about advising, they, they kind of double dip. They can count towards the German major or minor, and they can count towards general education requirements. And that's what these PPs at the end of, um, after them, those stand for which learning perspective, which general education category they fulfill. So PP stands for perspective on the past. So a class on decadence and decay in, the, in Weimar, Germany. The Weimar Republic was that period between the two world wars. Um, outsider figure in literature and film has a PL, that's perspectives on literature. There we're going to use literature and film um, made by and about um, people who are not part of the social mainstream in German culture. So that includes LGBTQ people, that includes Afro-Germans, Afro-Deutsche we say in German, so Germans of African descent, that includes Turkish Germans, that we're going to read works by those people talking about their own experiences, as well as um, some like analytical texts sort of providing some, some framework for those voices. German cinema, I'm teaching this semester, that's always a fun class. Um, the films are all in German with subtitles. Um, and we watch a wide variety of, of films from like 1920 till about 19, uh, 2010. So we cover like a, a broad array of, of time. Um, and uh, in the process we learn, oh, and the PA on that stands for perspective on arts. So again, that's the general education category that fulfills. We, so we learn a bit about film technique, about editing, about cinematography. It's not, um, too in depth, it's really meant to be sort of a general introduction, not for not for specialists. And then we watch a bunch of films and we also talk about um, the historic context, like what's going on in Germany at the time that influences the kinds of films that were made and the kinds of films that were not allowed to be made, which is often also a super interesting question. So those are all courses that I personally teach. These next two are course numbers that again, allow us to um, transfer and credit taken overseas. So they just say taken in Germany. If you take a literature class in Germany, whether part of a summer program or a semester, we can easily transfer that credit. Cultural studies would be, again, if it were any sort of cultural class that you might take in Germany, we have a class number for that. Senior inquiry is not technically required for the German major. It is required of, at the college level, but um, as I said, most of our students are double majors in German. So um, most of them, have do their do their senior inquiry in their whatever their other major is in business or biology or music or whatever. A couple of the other classes that fulfill this category are taught by my colleagues in the Scandinavian program um, because the German and Scandinavian culture share a lot of um, they share a lot of elements. Um, and so we have a couple of classes like folklore and fairy tales where you would might read and analyze folklore and fairy tales from um, the Brothers Grimm, so the German tradition, but also Hans Christian Andersen from, uh, from Denmark. Arctic narratives, those are narratives about Arctic exploration, about the far north, and some of those explorers and people who, who did that were German. Um, Northern European drama, again, this is um, so German and Scandinavian chiefly, though there might be some other um, countries, uh, works from other countries um, mixed in there. And Kierkegaard in the South, um, that is Kierkegaard, the philosopher, and also people that he worked with. Um, and that PH stands for Perspectives on Human Existence. That's the general education category there. There are two classes taught by my colleague David Ellis in the history program. Um, history 316 and 317 are different periods of German history. So modern from 1500 to 1914, that's the beginning of World War I, and then World War I to the present. Those, as you see, also have learning perspectives PP stands for perspectives on the past, and G stands for global diversity. So it deals with global diversity issues. And the final one in this list is religion 370, uh, 270, which is about Martin Luther, life, thought, and legacy. So as you see, there's a really wide variety of classes in that culture category that can fulfill both gen ed requirements and the German major and minor requirements. So that's part of how we tried to make this, the German program is as flexible as we can to help it make it easier for you to, to fulfill requirements um, and sort of squeeze in the classes that you need around, um, around other obligations. And um, the major does require some sort of international language and culture program or internship. Um, the internships, we have had a few students who, you, who did internships and those were things that they kind of arranged themselves. We had students who were um, who spent a summer or a semester in Germany and happened to know people or they had family friends and they sort of arranged that. Like that is, is not a, a super formal thing at this point. I would love for that to become a more built up thing so that we could have more people do internships. We had one person who worked, um, so again, it was a family friend 
in both of the in all of the situation in a couple of the situations actually one worked for i can't remember what kind of business but he did an internship over the summer with somebody did an, inter an engineering internship last year um and um we had somebody who did a job shadow with a physician in germany so we have had that as an option most of our students who do the major um take part in a more formal study program um, we have are affiliated with um, and we recommend this short-term program in Eichstätt, Germany, which is in Bavaria. It's a small city, not one that you've necessarily heard of because it's really little. It's beautiful. Though. Um, it's in the middle of this sort of nature preserve park. Um, it's a small university. It's a little bit smaller than Augustana, which is unusual for a German university. But for some people, that makes it actually the exact like, the perfect fit. It's a small city. It's a small university. They're super friendly. They're super nice. They've been doing this international programs for like 30 years. Um, and we have sent students for a, quite a long time, for at least uh, 12 years of that, I think. Um, and we can send one student or we can send seven. As long as you apply early enough, you can go. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a nice opportunity. It's only four weeks. It's very inexpensive. So it's pretty easy to, um, to finance. And because it's in the summer, it's pretty easy for people to fit that in around um, other course requirements. Like some people can't afford to be gone for a semester because of chemistry classes that they need. Some people don't want to be gone because they play a varsity sport and they don't want to miss out on their season. There's plenty of reasons why the summer, a summer course might be the better option. We also have two exchange programs, um, also in Bavaria, because my, my former colleague who's now retired was a big fan of Bavaria, and we have these great setups, so we've kind of stuck with them. We have exchange opportunities in, um, in Regensburg and in Passau, also both in Bavaria. Um, Regensburg is the first place I ever visited when I was in Germany. Um, I took part in a, a, pro, a summer program there and I've only ever visited in the summer. So as far as I know, the weather's always nice and you can always sit in a beer garden and have a nice beverage outside. That might not be true in winter, but that is my experience of, of Regensburg. Um, they're both beautiful, smaller cities, not tiny, like 100,000 people, um, but they're university towns. Um, um, Passau specializes more in things like international business and law. So for people who are interested in double majoring in, in that kind of area, in political science or interested in law, interested in business, that's probably the better choice. Regensburg is a great all-around university. It's just they have everything. Both of them are also pretty internationally oriented, so they do offer some courses in English. So there are some, um, some, some we've have, have, we have had people who go take part in the exchange who didn't really know a whole lot of German, who were stable, still able to go. They took some German, they took some history or something else in English, um, and still had a great experience there. So those um, exchange programs are for a semester or for a year. Most of our students go for a semester, usually in the German Sommer semester, so they would miss out our, on our spring semester and be gone for part of the summer. So that was the, the quick tour of what the classes look like. Um, I don't know what classes, what questions you might have. I know that was a lot of information to throw at you, but I thought, um, I, I hope by kind of walking you through this, you have a little bit of an idea of the array of topics that I try to cover. And I, and I can say I, because I am the chief person in the German program. Um, I do have a colleague who teaches like the German 101 and 102 classes. And, and as I said, my colleagues in Scandinavian who teach German topics and my colleague, Dr. Ellis in history, of course, teaches German history. But as far as the upper level German specific courses, that's all me. So, so I can go ahead and like say it's, it's, it's mine. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's the, other, the nice thing is that because these are all classes, the whole program is something that I've developed. The really great thing for me is that I'm excited about every class I teach. Like I didn't develop classes that I didn't want to teach. I, it's not like, oh, I got to do that intro, blah, blah, blah. I don't feel that way about any of my classes. Every class I developed is one that I, I'm, that I, there's just cool stuff to read and cool stuff to learn and to talk about. And, and I, I don't feel completely like an expert in all of them. Like there's always something more to learn, especially when you're talking about contemporary culture, there's that changes, right? It's a moving target. Then that's actually really exciting to me. So that's really fun. So I don't know um, what questions people might have for me. Should I stop the share? Should I put this away? I can always email this to anybody who, who wants to have it. There we go. I was wondering what are the average size of German classes? The average size. Um, the, 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't have to do, like, do the math in my head. I think um, the I typically offer like a, of those intermediate German language classes, a 200 level class in the fall and a 300 one in the spring. And the 200 one classes in the fall are almost always bigger than the three, the 300. So the 300 class I'm teaching right now has 12 people. And I think I had more like 20 in the fall. Um, 20 is the maximum really. Uh, the film class, the film class I right now have also have 13 or 14, um, which is a little small. Sometimes I have a few more than that, but I don't know that I've ever taught a class more than about 25 at Augustana. I mean, it's kind of just how we roll in general, but definitely for the language classes. Um, there's a fair amount of, um, you know, like speaking and writing and interaction. Like if you had a class of 50, it wouldn't be, a, it wouldn't be the same experience. So, but yeah, about 20 is about the maximum, I would say for us, for sure. Are there any other study abroad programs, like besides the exchange ones that are connected to German? Like what all are the study abroad programs available? There's um, the semester, the exchanges that are for a semester or for a year. Um, and the two that are most established are the ones that I talked about, the um, Regensburg and Passau. And then there's the summer program in Eichstätt, which is only four weeks. Um, the college is also part of a consortium I don't remember what it's called. There was sort of some sort of consortium where there, that opens up a whole bunch of, it's also an exchange program, but it's not like a one-to-one. -one. It's sort of like we would send a student, say, to Austria, and may, we, we might take a student from Kenya. I mean, that it's, it's, a, it's just part of this big consortium. Um, and there's a bunch more options in there um, that include, actually, I think the universities that we already have agreements with, but also some other options. So those are also possibilities. So if there were if you really thought like, I don't want to go to Bavaria, I would really prefer to go someplace else, or I would really love to send this, spend the semester in Vienna, we could probably find something like that. There are a few other study away programs that are run by colleagues of mine, not in German. Um, and I usually don't talk about those because I kind of want to nudge people to do the ones that are German language programs. Like there's, um, there's a program that is, a colleague in philosophy and somebody else in, in psychology. It's on like on neuroscience and they go to the Max Planck Institute, whatever in Leipzig in Eastern Germany, but they, they, they do site visits and they do really cool stuff. It's a great learning experience, but it's not, none of it is done in German. So like, I don't usually like to advertise those. I mean, I'm sure they're great experiences, but I really want to nudge my students to do the language programs, the ones where you're really immersed and you, you know, work on German language and not, only those, not those other areas, yeah. How many times can someone study abroad? Like, is there a limit over the course or per year? Or? I don't think there's a limit. I mean, most people, there are people who do multiple, take part in multiple programs. We have um, a student, Jessica, who's about to graduate, who did, who, who did two different programs. She did um, the summer program in Eichstätt, and then the following year she took part in a, she did a semester in Passau. We had a student, now that I think about it, a couple of years ago, who I think actually did four total programs over two different summers, in part because she was super smart in um, how she managed to book them. Like she did a short-term study away program with classics that was in like the early part of the summer. She traveled around in Europe by herself for a little bit. I know her mom was super nervous about that because I got nervous emails from her mom, but um, she was fine. She had a great experience. And then she did the, the Eichstätt summer program. So that was how she did, made, made use of like paid for a flight to Europe one time and then took part in two programs, like one back to back kind of. And she managed to do that two different times, which is unusual. I mean, really to do four different kinds of programs, but she did it. I don't think there's technically a limit. It's um, mostly about scheduling it. Like, can you schedule it? And also then the money factor, like, can you afford to do it? I mean, there's funding sources that can help you pay for these things. Um, and we always like to talk about Augie Choice because it's a really great thing, $2,000 that you can apply to anything. Theoretically, I always think of it as the study away money, but theoretically you could do an internship, you could do a research experience. Um, so Augie Choice is an option. There's um, a, an organization on campus called the Freestat Center for Peace Studies that they give grants that support um, not only international studies, but a lot of them that they support is international programs and not only language programs, but that's um, a source. If you're a language major, you can apply for a little bit of funding through the World Languages Department. Um, so there's, there's different pots of money, there's different ways to kind of piece together funding. But if you can afford to do it and can manage to squeeze it into your schedule, like 
we could have you come to August Salmon and actually go away a couple of times if you can do it. Yeah. As someone who works with a lot of students coming in as freshmen, I oftentimes get asked about, you know, can I get past those entry level uh, courses because I have so many credits or I've taken advanced placement or whatever. So how do you all handle that for, for incoming students? Um, we do offer credit for AP. Um, so if you get a four or a five on the AP exam, you get, I have to stop and think, is it four credits of, it's just called German 201 or German 200. There's just, again, a generic number that we give credit for and that counts towards the major or minor. In fact, I was just advising somebody yesterday about how, updating her, her, her plan to show that it put that credit in where it belongs. Um, but most people, we, we do have some German majors who start off in German 101, 102, um, but most of our majors are, I'm guessing like you, who have German at, in your high school, um, three or four years. If you've had three or four years, I mean, what you'll do is you'll take a placement exam, which is basically a questionnaire, and I ask you to write a little something, um, and then I say like, based on what I can see here, I think you're ready for 201 or, or maybe I, that I think you, that 102 is the right option for you. But my guess is if you've had three or four years in high school, you probably are ready for 201. Um, and that way you don't have to do that 100 level. You'll jump right into the courses that, that form the, the core of that major and minor. Um, and it, make, it makes it a little easier to finish the major if you start off at the 200 level, but we definitely have had people who, who took 100 level German and still managed to complete the major. I mean, it's, it's as I said, it's not huge and it's um, flexible, and especially for those people who managed to go away for the summer to earn some credits that way, that, that certainly helps. Nice to meet you all.